Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chair Yoga. Um, today, we're exploring the idea of grace. What does grace mean to you? Started a little conversation with the uh, participants in this class to just be thinking of various ways that we've experienced grace. What we would, how would we define it? Um, it's a word that I think shows up. I've just been noticing it in the various uh, teachers' conversations I listen to. You know, I'm a big podcast fan and reading books, etc. I just find it shows up um, with some frequency these days. So I'll share with you a little bit of what I pondered, but I just wanted to bring it up just for your consideration, just to see if you can um, reflect on that for yourself or whatever, to see what um, value might, that might bring to you. So my thoughts were this, that it seems like it's sort of a spiritual awareness. If we're, that's, I guess, what I was thinking of in terms of grace was a spiritual awareness that all of a sudden we're thinking, I'll, I'll use it like um, when something happens in my life that is just pure uh, you know, good luck or like it sure worked out well and it was no, there was nothing I did to create that. I'll attribute that to grace. You know, that's just grace, um, that sort of thing. So it's not tangible, you know, it's it's more, um, but, get, but this is what I did want to mention because it's so fantastic about what science is uh, taking on these days. It is measurable. Grace is measurable. Uh, things like hope, you know, there, there's scientific research that now goes into how does one's the brain waves and how is it experienced in a person, they can track that in the sense of well-being. And so they're, they're exploring ways to measure such things as grace, awe, beauty, you know, measurable, what I would all consider sort of spiritual notions grateful for them, so grateful because they're very real. It's very real to experience grace, to experience beauty and awe and wonder, love, kindness. You know, those are all those concepts that we attribute to this experience of our spiritual nature. So thanks for coming on board with me to just, just open up the window of exploration to the word grace and maybe other kinds of concepts that might you know come from that. So yeah, it's beautiful. We're gonna start our practice today standing up. So if you will join me there. I've moved my chair to the side a bit. So I've got some room here to, so I want you to take a step into a wide stance. So you've got your feet wide apart, your feet are straight. So you're purposeful about that. Your feet feel parallel to each other. Hands are on the, waist and I just want you to start, you gotta bend your knees with this. I just want you to start moving your hips from side to side. And of course this can be just like a uh, sitting down, a transitional time where we become aware of the body and we become aware of the breath. So as you're starting to move your hips, feeling your feet to the earth, real good sense of grounding here, you start to deepen your breath purposefully finding a full inhalation and a full exhalation and experience of that. Try breathing in through your nose and then letting that breath come out of your mouth just gently. Doesn't have to be the big ha sound, but it could be. So breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth in any way that seems right for you. Hips are swaying side to side, feet are in a parallel position. So just feeling some movement in the body. Now turn your head. So just whatever way it goes that you're moving and you're introducing movement where the head is turning and looking so that you can start to feel how your neck is doing today. Maybe every once in a while you deepen that breath. Back to settling into a rhythm of breath. Moving the head. So we're just going to call this kind of our way of doing nonlinear movement. We're just kind of flowing here, loosening up the hips, feeling how it starts to loosen up the shoulders just by swaying side to side. Good. Let's come back to stillness now. And I want you to just slide down your leg. Let your hand glide like down the seam of your pants. Hand at the other hands at your waist. 
till you can't go any further. And I want you to let your ear face the floor. Your ear is facing the floor. So you're very specific about how you're turning and holding your head. And it's like you're trying to listen to something on the floor, turning, facing your ear toward the floor as you fold to the side. Feel that nice stretch. Glide yourself back up, take a little pause. And then we're gonna to go to the other side, one hand at the waist, glide down the seam of your pants and you're lowering your ear down so you can face your ear to the floor on the other side. <clears throat> Deepen the breath, feel your feet, soften the knees, don't hesitate, soften the knees. Good, and then glide back up, all the way up, all the way up. I want you to just open up your hands, palms are facing down, open up your arms, palms facing down, and then just gently bring your hands behind you so that your fingertips can touch back there. So we're just coming kind of open into that T and then bringing those fingertips back behind you so you're touching your fingertips. One more time, I know it's easy. Just come back, touch those fingertips. Now keep your fingertips touching and start to feel how as you try to squeeze your elbows toward the center, you can feel a stretch through the back and into the shoulder blades. Keep your fingertips touching and start moving your arms toward the midline. Now pay attention to what you're experiencing in your neck, upper shoulders. Breathe into all that. Soften wherever you can. Fingertips still touching. And then I just want you to start moving those arms from side to side. The fingertips are still touching back there and you're just kind of swaying side to side. You're holding your head in a way that is mindful for your neck. So it's, you know, it's my typical way of saying manage the weight of your head. Let's pull in the belly so that feels like we've got more stability. And we'll come back to center. Now I want you to interlace. So with those fingertips touching, see if you can weave your fingers together so you've interlaced the fingers now and pull the butt of your hands, the palm of your hands together as much as they will. Maybe you have to do it for a second and then you have to release, but if you can pull and hold, so you've kind of made fists back there, a, a clenched together fist. Now we're gonna pull those knuckles back and away from the back body. And I want you to gently move your head according to the way your body seems to need to respond to this. So you've got your interlaced hands back there. Those shoulder blades are really speaking to me. Breathe in, breathe out. And then again, try to move from side to side. So if the interlaced hands is not doable, you just can't get that to happen. Go back to the fingertips touching. So it's just sort of a creative movement. You're just allowing the side to side movement and how your body turns to accommodate that. That's what we're exploring. Good, and then let's come back and release the hands to a neutral position. Let's just do some shoulder rolls. Change the direction of that. And this time when we slide our hand down the seam of our pants, we're gonna let the other arm reach past the ear. Top arm is extending past the head by way of the ear and your other hand is gliding down your leg. So you feel grounded, you know, you're connected to your body for more support. And your ear, you turned your head in such a way that your ear is facing the floor. Deepen your breath. Feel how your body weight provides the stretch. You bend. And the body weight and its relationship with gravity equals, you know, this stretch, this feeling of 
more in your body. You can feel more. Give it one more full breath. Let's be sure to soften your knees, bend them a lot if you need to, to come all the way up, all the way up and keep that extended arm right up there. Let's deepen the breath. Drop that hand be between your shoulder blades so your elbow is reaching up. Let's frame the head now. Grab hold of that elbow and frame your head. Now let's just do some movement side to side. Again, soften the knees. You don't need to lock them. Be better if you didn't lock them. And then when we release that and we've switched arms. We've switched arms and we're gonna glide down the side. That outside seam of your pants. I don't have a seam either. I know what you're saying, but you get my drift. Arm past the head by way of the ear, surrendering, surrendering your body weight to the pull of gravity in your body. You can really feel that. Let's deepen the breath. So there's this whole level of allowing, isn't there? There's just like, you got to let go and allow this. Ear is facing the floor, so you've turned your head in a particular way. Like you're trying to listen to something down on the floor. Bend the knees a little bit more and then let that upper arm lift you up and we're gonna to continue to lift up. Catch up with your breath, let your body adjust. Drop that hand between your shoulder blades, let's frame up the head, grab your other elbow now. Feel how it, you have to position so your neck and head feel comfortable inside that little frame. And then I just want you to go gentle movement side to side. Beautiful. Let's take a backstroke to come out of that. Let's do two more. Inhale up. Exhale back, so you really got your arms back behind your head as much as you're able. Let's step those feet back together, a little bit closer together. Actually, bring them as close together as you can that you're comfortable with. Create a mermaid leg. We're gonna straighten our arms and place our hands on the thighs. They're close to the knees, but I would like you to avoid the kneecap itself. So you're down there close to the knees, but you're on more of the flesh of your thighs. And we're gonna start circling around. So this is that movement that opens up the ankles. It starts to move into the joint in your feet, the joints in your feet, many, many of them. And of course your knees finding a little different range of movement in the knees. You find a little more lateral, but oh so gentle. I think easy access. Now having your feet together, because it is more of a balance to do it that way, is problematic for you. Just step your feet a little further apart and give that a try. See if that improves your experience. Find a drishti. You don't need to look at the screen. That wouldn't be a good choice for a drishti. Find something to look at, focus your eyes somewhere. Deepen the breath so you start to feel the rhythm of it. That's all we're looking for. Ease, ease of breathing, rhythmic breathing in and breathing out. Now we've done several in this way. Let's change the circle to go the other way. It'll feel different in your feet to begin with. It'll feel different all the way through. And it might be frustrating in terms of the coordination that's required, but stay with it. You'll get there. Nice, smooth breath. In and out. Couple more. And then we're going to kind of continue in this same posture, except that we're going to bring our feet a little further apart. 
Otherwise it looks very much the same. Think about cow and cat now. I want you to round through the back body and, and uh, open up into more of an extended spine by way of movement of the hip. So it's really tuck and tilt of your pelvis. Tuck and tilt your pelvis. Keep your arms straight. Really very little movement in the shoulders and head. Movement is in the pelvis. Tuck and tilt. Try to exaggerate the movement. Pull the belly in, that really helps. You know, you're rounding into the low back. Pull the belly in. Couple more. Tuck and tilt. Good, and now this time we're gonna slide our hands down our legs, right down the front. If you need to be near your chair for this deep, deeper forward fold, be sure to keep a hand on the chair, fold down, surrender the weight of your head so you're looking down and underneath yourself. And at the same time, the efforting is to draw your body closer towards your legs as much as you're able. You're folding, looking under you, and seeing if you can bring your body closer to your legs. One more full breath cycle. Then jump your hands to your shins. You're below your knees, but you're, and you're on your shins, and you lift yourself up about halfway. Now, create a dome of your back body. Create a roundness through your back body, so it feels like a dome through your shoulder blade area. That's it. Let's break, breathe here. We're halfway up. They call this just a half lift. And then slide your hands back down toward your ankles and feet. Look underneath yourself. Deepen the breath. This time when we bring ourselves up, we're gonna jump over our knees, get our hands to our thighs. Squeeze your elbows in towards your waist, and now you can create an L shape. I want you to try to straighten the bend of the knee. You're gonna push your hands into the thighs. You're on the fleshy part of your thighs, and it creates length through the spine and straightening out through the legs. So your body is in an L shape. Let's have a full breath cycle here. Feel the feet. Feel it in your calves and into the back of the legs all the way up. Soften the knees quite a bit and bring yourself upright slowly to an upright position, you know, our mountain pose. Hands face forward, arms are real close to the side body. Deepen the breath. Take your time back to your fullness of breath in and out. Don't lock the knees, keep a softness there. Shoulders are back and down. When you're ready, we're gonna open up the hands. Palms are facing down, opening up the arms, and then bringing those fingertips together behind you. Interlace the hands, pull the knuckles back and away from you. Feel the shoulder blades now. Do the, I bet you they feel different. I'm gonna say better, much more spacious than our first go. Side to side movements, interlaced hands or fingers touching if that's your better option. And try to bring your palms together if you've got that as an option available. And take some flexibility in the wrists. Beautiful. Let's come back to neutral now. Back to our mountain pose, palms face forward. Let's deepen the breath now and find a full body experience of the breath. Inhale, imagine that breath is following a track up through the front of the body, all the way up. You don't need to move your hands, I'm just illustrating. All the way up to the crown of the head. And then the exhalation is down through the back side of the body. This is part of your imagination and your intention. Inhale for a full body experience up through the front of your body. And when you reach the top of your head, you exhale down the back of your body. 
So it's like you're covering your body with this breath, this potent breathing in and breathing out of the life force energy. Again, a micro bend in the knee, full body breath up through the front side of the body, down the back side of the body. Good, let's sync up our breath. Inhale, palms together up and overhead. Exhale, bow into your own heart. Inhale, back up and exhale, go all the way around. We're gonna come close to the chair now to use the seat. Start by a tabletop position. So you've got your hands on the chair seat and your arms then become like table legs. I want us to use this to strength to give us the support we might need. You might decide uh, palms down is too hard on your wrists and you're gonna choose some other way to, to steady yourself. So please explore that. Here's what we're gonna do is lift the heels up, bend the knees, drop those feet flat to the floor. So bend the knees, lift the heels up so you're way onto the toes and balls of your feet. Keep your gaze looking straight down. You're just moving through the legs moving particularly through your feet, stretching the arch of the foot, stretching into the toes, heels pop up. Now try to alternate it. So one knee at a time is bending and lifting up. So you're kind of, we call this walking the dog. So you're just lifting up one heel at a time, alternating from side to side. Keep your awareness in the sensation. Find that breath to support it. Both feet to the floor, take a tiny step back and see about this. We're gonna lower ourselves to our forearms, elbows and forearms come down. First, I want you to just bend your knees to accommodate that and move your body forward and back. Manage the weight of your head. So you gotta support that weight so your neck isn't straining. So you're sort of lifting, keeping your back of your head somewhat in line with the spine as you move your body back and forth. Your body weight is held mostly by your legs, but somewhat by now the, the forearms and the elbows. Come back to what you think of as neutral and let's go back to walking the dog. Lift one heel at a time. And pay attention to what works best. Maybe you tuck your chin in and you sort of watch your feet and that feels more supportive for your neck. So choose a way that you can walk the dog, support yourself with your forearms. Maybe you can feel the dome through the back shoulder blades but pay attention to what your neck seems to want, how to manage the weight of your head. Walking the dog, breathing in, breathing out. Both heels are up, both heels push down, stretch back, pull your hips back. Think of downward facing dog here, pull, lengthen through your arms, pull back. And then come back it's very slowly now, bringing yourself upright. So take your time, making your way back to an upright position. Let's find our mountain pose, catch up with our breath. Feel what you feel. You're feeling how your body was and what that, you know, what that feels like now after you did those kind of movements in your feet, ankles, your shoulders, your back body, feeling the spaciousness. Let's do our tree pose, our balancing pose right here and now. So as you bring yourself near your chair, your standing leg or your tree trunk is near the chair. And then just start the process by lifting the heel up on the other foot and rotating your thigh bone, rotating your knee to point out so it's in an external rotation. 
And you can hold that with the sole of the foot resting against the inner ankle of the tree's trunk, or you can slide it up so it's closer to the calf and shin area. Palms come together at the heart. Find your drishti. Lift up. And then let your arms become the tree's branches and express that in any way you'd like. Finding your full breath cycle. No matter what, we land there, don't we? No matter what we're, tra we're trying, what kind of pose, what kind of movement, we land back in the full breath in and the full breath out. Always. Stay steady with your gaze. So you can feel the fullness of your breath and you're steadied, kind of grounded by the drishti. Let's get our hands, maybe our hand comes back to the chair. Let's rotate coming back mindfully to both feet on the floor. I'm gonna move, you probably don't need to. I'm just gonna allow that chair to support on the other leg, that standing leg, the tree's trunk rooting. And again, we just bend the knee and rotate so the sole of the foot is resting into the inner ankle or into the shin and calf area. Stand real tall, lift. Palms can come together to begin with. And then again, we find our drishti and find our expression of this tree with moving our hands into a position that we choose, a way to express the branches of the tree. Steady that breath in and out. Full breath in and out, long, strong spine. Pull the belly in, you want core support. Exhale completely. Let's come out of it with the same sort of intention and mindfulness as we came into it. Both feet are on the floor. Take a pause in your mountain pose. Catch up with your breath just in case you sort of lost that. We're going to transition into our seated position and we're going to use a posture to do that. I'm going to turn my chair kind of a funky angle just so that you can see me. You don't need to do anything like that because we're just in front of the chair. Let's practice our chair squat. So it's like you're going to lower yourself onto the chair seat, but you don't, you hover above it. So you've pushed your body weight back, taking the body weight out of your knees and hovering that. Hands can be at the waist, they could be at the prayer position, they could be hands on the thighs. So you choose what supports you best in this pose called the chair squat or the chair pose that of course is really helpful for strengthening the thighs, strengthening the buttocks. Let's do a couple movements like that. Coming into our chair, hovering above the chair seat, finding your breath, come back up and out of it. Any move you ever need to, any reset you need to, you always do that. And this time we're gonna come into the chair squat Hover, breathe in and breathe out. Feel your weight in your feet, but make your way onto the chair seat. Come all the way into the chair. While we're here, now move yourself forward so you've got plenty of ability to move your legs so you're not using the backrest, of course, and you're centering yourself on the chair seat. Let's do that chair squat twist, but we're gonna do it by way of the support of the chair, of actually sitting on a chair. So it looks like this. Again, I'll give you a side angle. You're sitting in your legs joined together kind of a position. Palms come together. We're gonna fold a little bit forward and then rotate so that the, the elbow comes onto the outside edge of your thigh. It doesn't matter which side you start. Press your palms together and we're gonna turn our head so our ear is facing our feet. 
or maybe it feels like it's more, you know, just the floor, however you visualize that. And breathe in and breathe out. Squeeze your legs together. Try to move the shoulder blades, that top shoulder blade pull back. Let the lower shoulder blade edge toward, you know, where your elbow is. Yeah, like that. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's come back to a neutral position. Catch up with your breath and then we're gonna twist the other way. So we rotate to get our elbow to the very outside edge of our thigh. We stack those elbows straight up and down from each other. Palms are really pushing into each other. Turn your head so your ear is facing the floor. And you can use the leverage of your elbow into your thigh. It helps you to start moving that lower shoulder blade forward towards your knee. And your upper shoulder blade can pull back a little bit. That's the essence of this twist, aligning the shoulder blades like that. Pull your belly in for extra support and see what that does to your experience. Exhale completely. That's it, keep breathing. Knowing the breath, noticing how the breath feels in your body. Let's unwind slowly back to a neutral position. And we'll come into, we're gonna use our block now, coming into our um, mountain pose. I'm gonna bring it the block between my ankles. You choose wherever you have found that block to be useful in aligning your legs in this in the seated posture. Palms are alongside the body and alongside the frame of the chair. Let's pull the belly in, pull those shoulder blades back and down. Can you remember coming into this pose as an opening pose before you've warmed up your body when we just start? Can you remember how your body feels in it? versus how it does right now because of all the movement you've already done. I can feel the difference in May. It's just amazing how much more access I have to a nice strong seated position and my shoulder blades are back on the back body with no effort seems like. I like it. It's great. It's a great experience when we warm up the body like that. Settle that breath into a rhythm of movement, feeling it throughout your body. And when you're ready, extend those arms in a T. This time, palms are up, thumbs are pointing back. Turn your head to look from one hand to the other. So welcoming in the experience of what your neck and head feel like in a seated posture, arms extended, you're just Glance, you don't need to wait for me to tell you when to move. You're just moving your head, neck, shoulders, aligning. Smoothing out your breath. Beautiful. Let's bring our gaze forward and bring our hands forward and interlace your hands like you're making a fist. So we just interlace those fingers. So we've just made this fist-like position. And then I want you to rotate it around so you can stretch your palms out. So we're just going to move through that from fists to interlaced hands, palms stretching forward, back to just fist extending out. It's kind of moving through the hands and the wrist area. It's really all about that experience. Stretching through those joints of your hands and your wrists. Next time you're stretching those palms forward, your interlaced fingers intact, lift that up. So now your palms are lifting toward the ceiling, arms are framed around your head, right by your ears. Push your feet to the floor, lift your body upright. Feet are engaged, legs are engaged. So if you got everything firing for you, your whole strength of your body is helping you Extend those hands up toward the ceiling. Side bend, hold. Remember how, how comforting it is for your neck 
and the stability it needs if you bring your head close to your arm. Exhale completely. Let's go back to center and then we'll gently go to the other side. Kind of lay your head into your extended arm. Just a soft, easy movement. Just notice the stabilization of that, just the ease of it. Arms extended with as little bend in the elbow as you can manage. Excellent, we come back up. Let's extend those arms right out in front of this palm. Stay the same, rotate it around so you've got your fists together like we started with. And then release those hands to the thighs. Let's open and close. If there's any movement you need to do now to reset or kind of stretch out those hands after you did all that movement with them. Good. Let's use our block now. We're going to go back to the twist of the, of the chair. I'm going to have my block handy. I'm not sure what how high up I need it. I'm going to go with the medium. I'm forward of the chair a little bit, so I feel like I've got plenty of room. I'll, I should, should set myself up for a side angle so you can see what I'm going to go for. We started our twist by bringing our, oh, I know, sorry. I think that block is going to go in front of the toes. I think it goes in front of the toes. Try that with me. We started our twist by bringing our elbow to the outside edge. This time the twist has one hand on the block and the other hand up in the air. Turn your head so your ear is facing your hand on the block and you're trying to lift your arm up so it feels like it's straight up and down from where your hand on the floor is. Squeeze those thighs together. Breathe in and breathe out, rotating in the waistline area. Deep in the breath. And let's come back to center. Bring yourself back up, take a pause. And I just start by kind of rotating like I'm going into that twist, bringing my elbow over toward my thigh, but then extend the hand down to the block. And you kind of got the upper body in motion. Turn your head so your ear is facing your block in your hand. And now the other arm is reaching up. You can always slide your block into a position that serves you better. So it's positioned near your feet in a way that gives you the support you're looking for. Keep working the pose where you're breathing and you're experiencing and you can start to feel little adjustments, little micro micro moves that might help feel you know just right much more acceptable in your body deepen the breath soften somewhere let's unwind from that hands are on the thighs bringing ourselves back to an upright position back to neutral here Let's squeeze those shoulders and release them. Squeeze and release. Now know what you're doing here so you can assign the value that you want. And that is that we're in the trapezius muscle. So it's a big cape-like muscle that, that encompasses the whole shoulder blade area. It starts at the, at the uh, base of the spine or base of the skull, I should say. So when we squeeze and release, we're really working that very outer layer of musculature in our back. And it's attaches to the shoulders, so it's just a big payoff. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Good. All right. Let's take a big breath in. Palms come together overhead. Exhale, bow into your own heart. Let's take a pause there. Bowing into the heart. Feeling our breath. Connecting to the moment we're here. Right here and now. Soften the mouth. Join me for an inhale up. Exhale, spread those arms all the way around. Let's do some movement now that's gonna benefit both the abdominal wall and the idea of crisscrossing our energy, our left side of our body and our right side of our body. Start by just lifting those legs up. Let's just get the legs in motion, lift up, lift up. Maybe hold on to your chair for support. Maybe you're gonna to try to give yourself more challenge and so your hands are at your waist. 
You're gonna use more core support. Hands on the chair offers sort of the similar support. So you choose what's a better shot for you. What's a better option? Just moving, getting those knees up as high as you can, just moving. Here's the crisscross. Let's extend the leg. So just this is the action with the legs, extended leg straight out. And the opposite arm is gonna match it. So you can touch, 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 and touch. Let's switch. Touch, 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 and switch. So you just do it the same way, just keep moving. Extended leg, extended arm. Doesn't matter to me how many touches you do, find your own rhythm. Keep your drishti, extended leg, extended arm. This is all in the framework of your chair. Don't go outside of that. Couple more rounds, stay with it. And back to your neutral position. Let's roll the shoulders or do whatever reset your body needs. Hands are gonna to come to the shoulders. Let's circle around, see how we are. Loosen that up. Just change the direction whenever you need to. Let's open the feet a little bit wider. Crisscross top and come back down and up. So it's just crisscrossing to the other side. Go as low as your body can do. So if you don't need to stop at your knee, you could go alongside of your thigh to deepen it and bring your belly lower to your legs. By all means, work with the range of movement you've discovered in your body. Be aware of how you're turning your head. Just be aware of where your ears are facing. You don't even need to direct them, just be aware. Do it twice on each side. So double pump. Let's even it out. See if we can find the same number on each side. Come back to neutral, reset the body. Extend those arms out in a T, palms are up. Inhale up, back to just your T, just move through the shoulders. Next time your hands are up, try a back bend. Keep your palms in a parallel position. You're pulling your hands back, your thumbs pull back, pull back. Maybe by now, as warm as your body is, you can lift your face to lift up toward the ceiling. You choose, keep your head very neutral or, and let it be all about the back, stretching into a little back bend. Or you can really add the full cervical spine into your back bend, lift your face up. Feel the expansion through your chest cavity. Breathe in and breathe out. As you bring yourself back to neutral, let's move our arms into the cactus-like position. Pull those arms back. Open and close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Keep going. Hold those closed arms together. Lift up the elbows just a bit. Breathe through your body so you can feel your breath nurturing your body right where you're experiencing this. And release and soften and reset the body. Maybe you gotta shake it out. I want you to get onto the toe pads. Think of walking the dog. So you've lift your heels up, you're on the balls of your feet and I want you to just start walking from center to outside of the center. So you're just going wide with that. So we're gonna stimulate the ball of the feet in the reflexology technology 
This is going to stimulate our respiratory system. It's just good for it. So we're just gonna give some pressure and some stimulation to the ball of the feet on purpose for that very reason. Let's land in a wide angle. Heels are in, toes are out, hands are on the thighs and we're circling around. Go as low as you can to that front movement. Come down and around and down and around. Stay with the same direction, the same circular movement. Head, neck, and spine are in alignment. So make sure your head is in alignment with your spine. It's not kind of taking on its own movement. It's taking on the same movement as your spine. When we meet in the middle, we're gonna use that. This is an opportunity to strengthen the pelvic floor. So put your hands on your thighs. I want you to take an in-breath. That feels like you're lifting yourself up off the chair. You're lifting the perineum up off the chair. That's the only layer you're on. Hands are pushing down into your thighs. It's like it wants to keep your legs grounded. And then you're just gonna breathe in and breathe out here. Find some movement. Inhale, you lift up, lift up. Exhale, you settle. So work on that toning of the pelvic floor. For those of you who have found this helpful, you could use the O-shaped breath, the vagal tone, stimulation of the vagal tone by inhaling through the O shape of your mouth, like a vacuum hose. Just use that if it's helpful for you and you like doing it. It adds a lot in terms of the vagal tone improvement. And of course, we're really working that pelvic floor, the perineum, to strengthen and tone that connective tissue. Relax your shoulders, they don't need to be tense. This is all action in the legs and in the pelvis. Last time, breathe in, hover, lift it up, and then settle, just settle, soften it all. Bring yourself back to an upright position. Now just do your circle counterclockwise. I'm gonna bet your first movement was clockwise. So try to circle the other way. If you can't remember, I'm gonna say go counterclockwise. It's likely that you started that way. Good. Let's bring that right leg to center. So it's, it has come away from its wide angle and it's just lined up with your hip and the other leg is opening wider. So you've created a right angle between your legs. Let's rest the forearm and elbow onto that. And we can do what's considered an extended angle. Posture, arm slides past the ear. I want you to notice your inner thighs are pulling away from each other. Your knees, both knees are lined up over the ankles. And if you can get your arm to extend fully with no bend in the elbow, great. You're managing the weight of your head. You're noticing where your ears are facing. Look for ways to expand, to make more within the body. Where is more? Exhale completely. We'll come back up and around. We're just gonna switch legs. This one is gonna be neutral, right in line with the hip. This one's stepping apart, right angle between the legs. You're still squarely facing forward. We're gonna lean into it, use our elbow and forearm. Shoulders kind of stack. Arm extends past the ear. Keep drawing your thighs open. You're engaging those inner thigh muscles to draw apart. Feel your knees in line with your ankles on both sides, both legs. Feet to the floor, you can feel the whole surface of your foot. Deepen the breath. Look for more. Manage your weight of your head. Know where your ear is facing. Look for more spaciousness between your ribs. Any amount. Be sure to exhale completely.
Good, and then we're gonna lift ourselves up and out of that. Both feet come back to center. Now it's time to scoot yourself back into the chair. If there's something else your body still needs, we're moving our way into Shavasana. So if there's still a stretch or a movement that your body is craving before you're able to settle in to a relaxed state of Shavasana, please do that for yourself. But we're gonna use now or the back of a chair, the hold the seat of a chair to support your body. Or like I hope some of you might be doing and choosing is that you lay down on your couch or you, you know, find a recliner or something that's just really nurturing for you, gives you all sorts of permission to totally use this time as a shift and a change of gears into a relaxed state. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale it out of the mouth with the sound of ah. That'll be a good place to start. Inhaling up, exhaling, ah. And just start to quiet, quieting the body, relaxing the muscles, feeling the support, feeling the steadiness that's available to you. You don't have to create steadiness you're relying on the steadiness that's available to you. See if you can uh, relax into that idea. Bring to mind the word grace. Maybe it doesn't hold a lot of meaning for you and it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's not uh, ringing any bells. That's okay. Like I said, it's sometimes it's just a felt experience, a softening, an allowing. It's peaceful. Maybe you could start to notice, do I, can I feel anything in my body that I would name or say that feels like grace? Maybe it feels like a blessing has moved into your space. Maybe it's a surrender to a higher power of letting go. Feel a softening of your tongue and your jaw. Relax the muscles around your eyes. And bring your sense of self, you know, the place where you normally abide within your body. Move it from your head into your heart. Move it from your head down into your body, into the heart space. And that it's not on the surface. It's not where you bring your hands to touch your chest bone. It's not there. It's below that. It's deep within your chest cavity. And see if you can feel your breath centering around that heart space. The movement of the breath in your body seems primarily experienced right there in your chest cavity where you've now taken up residence. You're going to locate yourself there for just a few minutes. You can go back to the head in a moment or two. But for now, we're going to locate ourselves in the heart space, the energy that resides there. And again, let's look for more. That because we're, we've located ourselves in a bigger physical space, we can feel more, more wholeness, more ease, more depth, however more shows up for you as you reside in the heart space. Breathing in and out from there. Feel your feet to the ground. You know where you are in your chair, 
in your place of relaxation. If you've allowed yourself to move into the heart space, to relax and experience more, more grace. Let the breath be as the breath is. And you're just noticing it with such love and affection. This life force energy. I'm taking a poem from Dana Falls, Go In and In. The poem is without a name, so I'll just begin. A life of truth walks the edge between ease and effort. There's nothing you must do to win approval. No list of saintly acts to tick off one by one. No required deprivations. Say yes to life, and you are blessed with countless opportunities to choose wholeness over fragmentation. You need but knock for doors to open wide. Ask, and you are filled with a presence so vast that all the words in your personal lexicon amount to nothing in its silence. Stop seeking long enough to receive the spirit that's within you now. Just be your truest self and the voice you've longed to hear will speak through you. Release your grip on limitation and possibilities roll out like endless ocean waves. All you have to do is kick off your shoes and run barefoot in the sand. Just be your truest self and the voice you've longed to hear will speak through you. Let's take that big breath in through the nose. Exhale it out of the mouth. Ah, sigh it out. Introduce movement to the body as you continue with your cleansing breaths. And maybe you move forward of your chair seat so that you can again lengthen and lift the spine and feel a place of right alignment. Join me as we sync up the breath. Inhale, palms will come together up and overhead. Exhale, let's bow into ourselves at our heart. Inhale, back up. And exhale, let's share this beautiful energy, this grace-filled energy with our communities. Palms come together at the heart. We bow to ourselves. We bow to one another. Namaste, my friends. And thanks for joining me once again. <laughs>